Hey, let me say something. Why do y'all think it's so important? Some people might be like, what's so important about the color? About the color? Why do y'all think it's so important? Give me Luke 1, uh, 171. Why do y'all think it's so important? Because what do they say? What do the world say? Jesus come to save, right? He come to save everybody. Jesus coming to save the world. But what's, let's read this, what Jesus said. Luke chapter 1, verse 71. Uh -huh. That we should be saved from our enemies. This is what Christ said. He said we're going to be saved from our enemies. Hey, Kai, before y'all walk off, us as black people, do we have enemies? Yeah. Who's our enemies? Would y'all agree that the people that's killing us, shooting us down in the street, would they be our enemies, somebody that we got to be saved from? Matter of fact, I got a better question for y'all. These atrocities that happened to us in 1619, 1492, right. yokes of iron on our neck, slave ships coming over here on cargo slave ships. To, the, to this day, the sharks still follow that same path because so many bodies were thrown over. Would you call that an enemy, the people that did that to us? How about when they raped our mothers, raped our sisters? How about when, they, when our sisters was pregnant, they'd take the knife and cut the baby out? Would y'all call that an enemy? So read this part again. This is why it's so important to know that Christ looked like you and that he's coming to save your people from what? Read it again. That we should be saved from our enemies. Us blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, we need a savior. We need somebody that's going to come and save us out of this oppressive state that we're in. Right here in America. Read it. Right. And from the hand of all that hate us. You hear that? And from the hand, y'all have a good one. And from the hand of all that hate us. Because believe it or not, you blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, there are people on this earth that hate your guts, and they show you every single day. You got redlining in your communities. You got drugs in your communities. Abortion clinics in your communities. Where are these things coming from? The people that hate you are putting it into your communities. You got to file food in your communities, pork, McDonald's. All of these things is destroying our people as a community. Where do the drugs come from? How do black people get AK-47s in their community? Their name launchers and all this other nonsense. They all got and they all got felonies. Where are these things coming from? So that's something that y'all really gotta think about. Guess what, sister? Christ looked like God. He comes to, to save his people. The people that he looked like. Now, since you said you had a question earlier, what you got? Come on now, we need you to answer because it might edify somebody else. What you got? Why are you out in your face? Oh, I can't even, I, you want me to look at the picture, sister? No. What you got? I was going to say, um, what do you guys think about Islam? All right, watch this. Give me, uh, give me Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 1. I want, I want you to read something, sis. Is that what you went to? Yeah. Okay, I, I want you to read something. I want, I want to show you something. This is out of the Quran. Come here, I want you to read something. This is out of the Quran right here. All right, you see that right there? Read it real quick and I'm gonna have him read it. So you, right, you didn't believe that. You, you've read that before in the Quran, correct? Okay, no, I'm gonna have him read it just for the edification of everybody else. Read that real quick. Say, we believe in God and in what has been revealed to us and what was revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes and in the books given to Moses, Jesus and the prophets from their Lord. Right. So we all agree that this came out of the Quran, what we've read right here. Now, Abraham, where do you find Abraham at? He's in the Bible. He's in the Bible, right? And then it also said that we believe in Ishmael. It said the tribe. Who's the tribe? The tribe, right. There's the 12 tribes right here. And where do you find them at? In the Bible. And it said we believe in the books that was given to Moses. What books were given to Moses? The Torah, the first five books of, uh, of the Old Testament. So Leviticus is book number one. We got Genesis, we got Exodus, and then we got Leviticus. Now, I'm going to let you know. So Leviticus is the third book. What we just read out of the Quran, it said that we believe in the books that were given to Moses. Leviticus is one of those books. Now watch this. Now the Quran, listen to me carefully. If the Quran is telling you that we believe in the first five books of Moses, and the, and the Muslim faith is telling you to do what? It, it said believe. When you believe on something, that means you do what it tells you to do. You have faith in it when you believe in something. So it's telling you to have faith in what the first five books are saying. Now we're going to read something out of the first five books. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 1. Uh -huh. 
Ye shall make you no idols nor graven image, uh -huh. neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. So, it says, neither should you make any image of stone in your land to bow down to it. What are they doing back there? As the hodge. Yes, they do. We we got. We, okay, hold on. Hold on. We gonna pull it up. We gonna pull it up. Pull, pull, pull up. Can somebody pull it up for me? Pull up the cobblestone. Okay. People down down to it. Okay. That's. A, go ahead. So again, remember, remember. Don't forget. We read that first thing out of the book that you say you believe in. That book tells you to believe in the first five books that was given to Moses and the prophets. Here, it tells you not to bow down to any one of them. They all are, it's all of them, the cobblestone. This is all the cobblestone. I want you to look at this. All of this is the cobblestone. What are they doing? They're bowing down to it. They're worshiping the stone. Read it again. I'm not here to try to. What's in you know, there? I, I, I don't care. I don't get it. It's a standard. It's a standard image. It's a stone. That's what's in there. It's, that's why they call it the copper stone. But the point is, if if your own book that you believe in tells you to believe in the first five books of Moses, and the first five books of Moses tell you not to bring up a standard image or a stone or this, that, and this. Then you're going against what your own book is telling you, and you're doing it. I'm not saying you have done it, but it, you got to think about that thing. All right, go ahead, what you got? Neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. So, right, so, so enough. Is that building considered a stone on my bed at the time? The, the so stone? Me, I'm from Liberia, right. so I don't know if I'm the age of my but I just but, understand. But, but all right, all right. So we're gonna get to that. I see. I see where you're struggling in that. Because, uh, we got Haitian, but no. Matter of fact, let me fix that. None of us are Haitian. A Haitian was a sla as a slave name that they gave, just like calling yourself African American, calling yourself black. But we are, uh, we are the Israelites. Now you said you're from Liberia, and you don't know if you're an Israelite or not. Now, before you said that, I was gonna ask you a question. Where in the Quran can it prove? your nationality to you, to show you that who you are in the Quran. Um, it, I'm, go ahead, I'm gonna let you answer. What? Exactly, that's my whole point. It doesn't have your, your, it doesn't have your history in it. But guess what? This book does, and we want to prove it to you. Give me Deuteronomy. Matter of fact, what's going on in Liberia right now to this day? Do they not have slavery going on right now? Are people not being taken and, and chains and sex, uh, shackles right now in Liberia? Oh, I have no idea. I just know the next Oh, uh, I, I implore you to go look it up on the news or look up an article in Liberia going on right now to this day in slavery. Islamic slavery at that. Watch this. Alright, let's read this real quick. Let's read what it is. From Babylon to Timbuktu, by Rudolf R. Winter. Because he could not read or write, his ears were attentive and keen to everything that the Jews related to. Now this is going into the this is called I'm about to tell you, this is going into the start right here at the top so that you know who it's talking about. Uh, read this first and then read that. The birth of Islam. So we're talking about Islam. Now who are we talking about in this book? Muhammad was born AD 750. So, I mean, 50, 5, 7. so we're talking about Muhammad. You, you familiar with Muhammad. And it's saying that he was born AD after Christ, after the death of Christ, which means he came after Christ. It's a, Islam is a new thing on the earth according to the Bible. All right, AD 557. Uh, Four years after the death of Emperor Justine. After Muhammad became a camel driver, he traveled to remote and intriguing lands. He led his caravans to Persia, Syria, and Egypt. 
transacting business with the merchants of every kind. On his business trips, he met Jews, Christians, and members of other sects. So pretty much it said Muhammad was a camel driver. And on his journeys, he met Jews that he dialogued with. Okay, read on. He interrogated them. He interrogated them with them, meaning he asked them many questions about their religions. What do you got going on about the things that they uh, believe in, right? He, he, he interrogated them concerning the tenets of their religion. He frequented the environment of the Jews and the rabbis. We got our uh, came to their uh, place of establishment. <laughs> Mostly because they were merchants in an omnipresent ethnic group. Uh -huh. Because he could not read or write. Uh -huh. His ears were attentive and keen to everything that the Jews related to him. Right, so you listened to him very intently. Mohammed learned and extracted much from the Jewish religion uh -huh. and compounded it with his new religion, Islam. So that's where that uh, religion came from. It's a new religion that came from him interacting because what were uh, Muslims uh, worshiping before they, what is it called, before they came into the polytheism. polytheism, all right? They were worshiping a god of every single day. They had the moon god, they had this god, that god. I, I, I grew up with a Palestinian and an uh, Egyptian, right? I knew that, and then when I go into their house, they used to have this uh, this little picture of it. And it had a god for every single day of the year. Every single day of the year. And on top of that, they had that half moon that they, that they be having. The moon so, and the stars. Right, the moon and the stars. So my point is, is that before he, uh, Muhammad, came into interaction with the Jews, they had a god of every day of the, of the year. And then he came into interaction with them, and he was like, you know what? I'm going to make a new religion where we're only going to have one god. Mon and now you have, what is it? Monotheism. Monotheism. Now, now you have uh, Allah. That's where Allah came from. Okay? Uh, give, me, um, give me Amos 2 and 11. Because they say Muhammad is a prophet, right? That's what they, that's what, uh, they say. Again, let's, it said we believe in the books. The first five books of Moses, and we believe in the prophets. So let's read what a prophet say in Amos chapter 2, verse 11. Amos chapter 2, verse 11. And I raised up of your sons for prophets, uh -huh. and of your young men for Nazarites. Uh -huh. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel? So the prophets are the children of Israel. All right? Not, not Muhammad. Go ahead, what's that? Uh-huh. Okay, there are many prophets and Jesus happened to be according to Islam. So with that being said, like the last prophecy, why does it matter where he's from? Again, information given to him was given to him by an intuitive Again, what you got? All right, go ahead, read that. Genesis chapter 17, verse 20. Uh -huh. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. You know who Ishmael is? Of who? Uh, of Abraham. One of the sons of Abraham. Matter of fact, we read him in that, uh, that uh, passage I had you read. It's, it mentioned Ishmael. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. So they did say that they blessed Ishmael and he will multiply exceedingly. Mind you, not is Islam is a religion. Ishmael is a nationality, is the Arab. Arab, he's the forefather, Muhammad was an Arab. He is the forefather of uh, Islam. What I'm trying to show you is that you're not an Arab. You're that, so that Islam is not your religion, but good morning. 12 princes shall he begin, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac. So again, the Quran said we believe in the first five books of Moses. This is Genesis. He said, yes, I will bless, bless Ishmael, but my covenant of my chosen people will I establish with Isaac. Isaac had Jacob, right? Jacob's name was changed to Israel. He had the 12 tribes. Give me that moment now. He had the 12 tribes. So yes, Abraham, uh, uh, I, is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
okay? God said that he would establish his covenant with Isaac, all right? So then it went down to uh, Jacob and then the 12 tribes, all right? So mind you, it said it will bless Ishmael, but his chosen people, which you are, will be with the Israelites, all right? And that's why we're trying to show you your true nationality, all right? not our true uh, religion or nationality. That's something that was given to us in slavery, just like Christianity or white man Jesus was given to us in slavery. The same you ever heard of the subset of slave trade? That's what the Muslim Start from the beginning. Let's start from one, verse one. Romans chapter nine, verse one. So her question was, why does it matter? Why does it matter if you're Islam, if you're? Because mind you, it matters because it's better to obey God than to, to, to uh, not obey God. When we read in Leviticus, it said you should not bear your own standing image of stone and bow down to it. In Islam, they're doing that. So what are they ultimately doing? They're going against God. So that's why it matters. So that's one point. It, it, it's a common so I probably to look it up. We have studied these things. But inside the building is a is a is a cobblestone. It's a right. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. Uh -huh. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. So this is going this is going into your question. Why does it matter? We don't. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost uh -huh. that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Uh -huh. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren. My kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites. So who is that? Paul, right? Or Paul said that he wished that he were a curse from Christ, all right? For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. So his brethren right. are the Israelites, the 12 tribes. He comes from the tribe of uh, Benjamin. To whom pertaineth the adoption? So you said, why does it matter? It says, to whom the Israelites, to whom it pertaineth the adoption. Right, who are Israelites uh -huh. to whom pertaineth the adoption uh -huh. and the glory uh -huh. and the covenants uh -huh. and the covenants, the Old Testament and the New Testament pertain to so the, the adoption, the glory and the covenants pertain only to Israel. Mind That's you, right. Going back to your question, why does it matter? And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. The law will only give it to the Israelites. That's right. And the service of God. And the service of God, only given to the Israelites. This is why it matters. And the promises. And the promises. What promises? That you will rule over your enemies with a rod of iron in the last days. That, That's right. that Christ is going to come back and save you from your enemies. That's that the right. kingdom of heaven is only for you Israelites. You That's right. Hispanics and Native Indians. That's right. All right? That's why it matters. If you don't notice, if you're in uh, uh, Islam or you're in... Christianity serving white man Jesus walking around with crosses on your neck, the same thing that they kill Christ on, then guess what? You're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven because right. that is a form of idolatry. Right. Okay? But hold on, we didn't finish the scripture. We didn't finish. I got you though. That is a form of, yes, the cross is a form of idolatry because it is a teacher of lies. That's right. All right? But Jesus never died. Jesus did die. Again, again, you're reading a book that's not for you. That's not your book. It was given to you. But we, we, we can get that, but hold on. We're going to go too, we're going to go too far. Let's not leave the point of what we're talking about first, then we can get there. Who's are the fathers and the womb as concerning the flesh? Christ came. So who's are the fathers? Talking about the Israelites, Christ came for those people, for the Israelites. Who is over all? God bless forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, uh -huh. for they are not all Israel who are of Israel. So they are not all Israel who are of Israel. We don't. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. So neither because they are the seed of Abraham, like Ishmael, he came from Abraham. But just because he came from Abraham doesn't mean he's the chosen. Remember when we read back in Genesis, it said, I will bless Ishmael. But he is not my chosen. My chosen will come through Isaac, Jacob, and uh, uh, the 12 tribes. We don't. But in Isaac shall my seed be called. That's why it matters. In Isaac will my seed be called. If you're going around and you're in the midst of uh, Islam or 
call yourself a Muslim, then guess what? You're in their service. I'm not the only black or African Muslim. I'm not saying you are, but I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to everybody. I only see you right now. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm dialoguing with you. So, I don't know, I forgot my, my, I forgot my point. Go <laughs> ahead, read it again. Verse seven. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. When you're in the midst of, thank you, when you're in the midst of uh, uh, Islam or, or, or the Muslim religion, you're at idol worship. Allah is another God. Matter of fact, same hold as, that. Would you say the same as Catholic people? Yes. Yeah, I you can't, you, it is. They, they worship in the, we just seen it with the cross on and all of that. Uh, the what mother, the, the mother, exactly, Mother Mary. All that is idol worship. You can't find Catholic in the Bible. Well, you can't you find. Why? Because it, why? Because it was set up by your oppressors in a way to try to destroy you and deter you from what we're reading right now. That's right. So, in, in Islam, believe it or not, is doing the same exact thing. Because you ever heard of Sub-Saharan slave trade? I tried to bring it up before, but if you look that up, that is a time period where Muslims took the children of Israel into slavery. And guess what? And when they took us into slavery, we learned their customs. That's why a lot of our people, yeah, you can that. That's why a lot of our people have become Muslims. Because the same way here in America, we have took on their customs. And now we believe in white man Jesus. We believe that we're African Americans. We believe in Christmas. We believe in, and this is black people as a whole. I'm not saying you, because the Muslims are don't uh, do that. But, right, but in Christianity, they do. But you can't find that in the Bible. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how we men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.